Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I got something a little bit different to show you. It is a drone, but it's actually an underwater drone. And this is called the Mito from a company called Novatix. The Mito is a 4K 30 frames per second underwater drone, and it's very stable. It's a very high quality built product, at least the drone is. I'll talk about that in just a second. But today I'm just gonna briefly go through the Mito and show you what it's about and kind of tell you about my experience of using the Mito for the past two months. And I'm not gonna get too in depth because what I wanna know is, is our underwater drones something that you are all interested in? So when you're done watching this video, I want you to let me know in the comments, you know, do you wanna see more on the Mito or do you wanna see more underwater drones? Because I'm kind of torn and I'll tell you about that here in just a second. So let's take a look at the Mito underwater drone from Novatix. Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to the channel. My name is Russ, if you happen to be here for the first time. And when you're done watching this video, go ahead and browse around and see if you find anything of interest or value. And if you do, click on that subscribe button. I would love to have you join. So most of my videos are related to drones, but I also do some other things, action cameras and other technology things. You know, I try to kind of mix it up a little bit just to, just to try different things. It's kind of fun to do that. And you know, one of the things that I kind of got interested in about a year ago was underwater drones because I was watching a lot of Dustin Dunhill and he does a lot of underwater drones. If you haven't seen him, I'll put a link for his uh, channel down in the video description, but he does a lot of drone reviews and a lot of, a lot of other you know, tech reviews, much like I do, but um, he does a lot of underwater drone stuff because he lives in Hawaii. And so when I watched his Mito review and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good, that looks pretty good. And shortly after I watched that, Novatix actually reached out to me and said, hey, do you wanna try our Mito and let your audience know what you think? I'm like, yeah, actually, I was just watching a video about it. And, and so they sent it to me. And so thank you, Novatix, for letting me check this out and tell all of you what it's about. So like I said, the Mito underwater drone is a 4K 30 frames per second drone. And the image quality out of the drone, I'll tell you right off the bat, is really good. And I'll tell you here, I'm just gonna tell you right now, when I first got this, it was the day before we went on our family camping trip for the summer. We always go on a big family camping trip for a week. And we went to Lake Skakawea, which is a very large lake in the state of North Dakota. And I thought, boy, this is perfect timing. So I took it with me. I took it down to the shore and I um, charged it all up. It actually had some battery in it when I got it, but I charged it up, took it down to the shoreline and it was a really rocky shoreline. And I just put it out and I kind of knew how to use an underwater drone because I had used a couple other ones before. But uh, so I put it out, it was kind of a windy day. It was very cloudy water and very rocky, sandy, rocky bottom. And so what kept happening is, um, I got it out into the water and then what happened is it kept getting plugged with rocks. Like it kept sucking up all the rocks and it would get jammed. We can see here, okay, there we got a rock in the motor. And then this one also has, oh wow, these are really jammed in there. And then we just quit. And then I had to kind of pull it back in with the tether. I'll show you that here in a second. I'll show you the, the tether. The tether and the buoy is actually really cool on this thing. But so I kept getting clogged with rocks and then I couldn't see anything because it was cloudy. And I just got really frustrated and I, I didn't even use it the rest of the week. I, I did a little unboxing and I'll put that up on the screen here as I'm talking so you guys can see what comes in the box because I'm not going to go through it in detail. But um, so I got it back up. I did a little bit of an unboxing video and I decided that, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to take this in my pool right here. We have a, a small um, 16 foot above ground pool. And I wanted to, for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to see what it looked like under the water. And I wanted to see how clear it was, you know, see what the video quality looks like. And it looks really good. The 4K footage looks good. It does download a 1080p file to your phone as you're using it. And then the 4K file is actually saved right on the drone. So you have to plug it in. It comes with a cable that you plug in and, uh, and download the footage to your, actually I think it's still hooked up to my computer. You download the footage to your computer and then you can watch the 4K footage. And it looks really good. And then this also gave me an opportunity to put my um, Insta 361R under the water so you guys can kind of see what it looks like as it's working under the water. Because where I live, the lakes are, they're not conducive to seeing things under the water. It's pretty cloudy, especially this time of year during the fall. And so I took it in the pool. And, and the other reason that I took it in the pool is you know to see how it looks and see how it reacts. But the most important reason was to get used to controlling it because this drone comes with a controller 
that has touch pads rather than uh, control sticks or joysticks. It has touch pads and so it's touch sensitive. And so you use your thumbs to navigate the drone and it's, it's really hard to get used to. I thought it was gonna be, well, that's really cool. That's gonna be really easy to control. It's not, it's hard. And it does take some time to learn how to do that. And then also the controls are not the same as using a drone. Like I'm used to using a typical DJI drone and it's pretty straightforward for me. It's second nature now, but this it's different because your yaw and your pitch and your forward and backward are it's just, it's complicated. So it took some time to learn how to use it and to know how to control the drone efficiently. Efficiently. So if you get this drone or any other underwater drone, just make sure that you practice in a pool or a small body of clear water so you can see where the movement is when you're moving, you know, on the touch pad. So I, I was glad that I did that. I took it in the pool and I got a little better at, at using it. And then the next day we went on another camping trip and I took it down to the lake, the north side of Lake Skakawea this time and I put it in the water on the dock and I wanted to do some boat inspections. I took it to the boat slips and there were some pretty nice boats there and I thought it would be kind of nice to see what, you know, under the boats and see what it looks like because the Nevadics, the Mito, you can tilt it at a 45 degree angle all the way up to a 45 degree angle up or down and so you can inspect, you know, the floor of the whatever lake or ocean or whatever or you can point it up and you can inspect boat docks or boats or whatever so I thought that would be great to capture some of that footage to show you guys what it looked like. Well, like I said, the water around here, especially in the fall, a lot of the lakes have turned. So everything's really green right now. And so that's what I'm gonna tell you right now. The biggest challenge of getting an underwater drone is you need to make sure if you're gonna get one of these that you have access to water that is clear. Dustin Dunhill, the reason that he does so well with his underwater drone reviews is because he lives in Hawaii and he has beautiful scenery to capture with his underwater drones and the water's clear and it's just the perfect place to do it. And there are also, I'm sure, many lakes that you can do that as well, but there aren't any near where I live. And the only thing that, that would be my saving grace for getting an underwater drone is we do ice fish. I like to go ice fishing. If you don't know what that is, we wait until the ice gets a certain level of thickness. We go out there and we punch a bunch of holes in the ice and we stick our lines down and we catch fish under the ice. So I'm really looking forward to see how this works while we're ice fishing because you know, normally we'll use underwater cameras or we'll use a Vexilar, you know, a flasher to find fish. And I think it'd be really cool to find fish with the Mito or maybe some other underwater drone. And then the water is also much clearer during those times, during the winter time, the water is pretty, like almost crystal clear around here. So I'm really looking forward to see how this looks under the ice. And, uh, but, but during the summer, it's just not, it's not right for me. And, and I'm sure most people, it's gonna be the same. So if you're gonna get an underwater drone, make sure you live in an area that has clear water that allows you to actually make use of it. Cause you can put it around and, and you know, use it on top of the water, which is like having a remote control boat, but they are kind of expensive and you could probably put that money towards something else that's a little more fun to do. So, so that's what I'll tell you about the Novatics. It is well built. It, it's a definitely high quality drone. The controller, not so much. I guess the controller's not too bad, but the, the uh, mounting bracket, which I don't have right here, but I'll put it up on the screen. It's very cheaply built. I wish they would have taken a little more time to kind of consider how they designed that. Like they put so much money into this awesome underwater drone. And then the mounting bracket, the foam bracket is really, it's just brittle plastic. And then it's not even in here tight. There's no way to secure it. And that's the reason I actually lost part of it. Part of it fell in the lake last weekend when I was using it on the boat dock. And it's because it, there's no way to attach it here. And thankfully I did not have my phone in there because if I would have had my brand new iPhone in there, I would have lost that in the lake as well. So, so the mounting bracket is the biggest negative that I have for this thing. Um, you know, it's not the drone's fault that I'd live near muddy water, but the mounting bracket is something that definitely needs to be fixed in, a, in, a, in the next version if they do come up with another version. Um, so that is the negative. The other negative, I guess, was the touch pads. I shouldn't say it's a negative. It's only a negative if you, if you don't take the time to learn how to use it. It's just different. It's different for me because I'm so used to using the joysticks. It is kind of nice, but I really wish that on the next version, they have a better mounting bracket and they have control sticks. Now you can print, they have a 3D printing file. So if you want to use a tablet with this, you can. You just have to download that printing file and then get access to a 3D printer and print that off. And, uh, and then you can use a tablet, which 
I think it would be a lot better. Uh, I used both my iPhone and my Android. I have a Google Pixel 3 XL. The connection between the mo my mobile device and the buoy, this is the Wi-Fi buoy, the connection between my Google Pixel and this was terrible. Uh, it was always cutting in and out. It was very pixelated. The Pixel was pixelated. <laughs> But, uh, but as soon as I used my iPhone, perfect. Downloaded the iOS app and the signal was awesome. I mean, no problems at all, no pixelation, no skipping or anything like that. So I, I should tell you about the buoy. The buoy is really cool. The, a typical underwater drone, you have to have the tether hooked up to the drone and then you have a little Wi-Fi unit that sends the signal to your controller or some people are even just tethered to the remote controller because Wi-Fi doesn't travel through water. So you have to have a way for the Wi-Fi signal to get through. And then this buoy actually sends the Wi-Fi signal through this to uh, my mobile device. And so the benefit of this buoy, of the Mito buoy, is that you can send this out into the lake with the Nevadics and it gives you an extra, gosh, I don't know what it is. I'll put it up on the screen, but I think, I think it's 500 meters extra distance. I'll put it up on the screen if I'm wrong. I might be saying it totally, I might be way off, but I think the, um, the tether right here is 50 meters. And then if you put this up, it can't be 500 meters, but maybe it is. So like I said, it'll be right here on the bottom of the screen. So what you can do is you can just throw this in the water and make sure it's hooked up to the Mito first. And, and then you have more distance. You can swim around, dive around, whatever you want to say, and this will send the signal to you. Now, I did not do that because uh, my first experience using the Mito, when it would when it get a rock stuck in the propeller, it would stop, it would shut off, and I couldn't get it started again. And that's a big problem. If you have this buoy out, say even 100 meters, and your drone stops, you have no way to retrieve it if you, if you don't have a boat or unless you want to swim, you could swim out to get it. But so I just left this next to me on the shore and I just unrathered the tether and let it go. But if you had a boat or if you were a really good swimmer or someone that has a boat, you could, uh, you could definitely put this out in the water and give you a lot more distance. So really cool thing also, this is solar. So it charges itself in the sun. That was really cool. I was really happy to see that. Um, this thing, I've never charged this thing. And I've used this, I, I would guess a total, a total usage time, probably eight hours of this, and I've never charged this. So pretty cool that it charges itself. Um, I have charged the drone once, and I have charged the controller once. So pretty good battery life on this thing. Both the controller and the drone have a really good battery life. Uh, I'm not sure what the milliamp, hours are on this battery. I guess I could pop it out here and see. But the battery is removable. You just unscrew it. I should probably put this up as B-roll so you guys can see what it looks like. But it's pretty heavy and I don't know if this is this whole this whole unit is really heavy. So if you're gonna be hiking or something and this isn't something that you want to take with you. This is something definitely you're gonna carry in your in your uh, in your truck or your vehicle and then carry it down to the shore. I wouldn't carry it too far. So this has got uh, 5,500 milliamp hours. So pretty good sized battery. And like I said, the first day I used this, I suppose off and on for about three hours, not total three hours, but it lasted, it's pretty good. So it, as you can see, it's, it's relatively heavy and uh, waterproof, so that's cool, obviously. Uh, it does have a mounting bracket on the front right up here. So if you want a GoPro on here or maybe an Insta360 ONE R or something like that. And then you could also put like a Loom Cube light here so you could have extra light. The lights are really bright. Uh, it has three levels of brightness, and uh, when it's set all the way up to the brightest, it really does light up uh, the area in front of it. Like I said, if you want to learn more about this, if you want me to really get into detail and take this out this winter and get some winter footage with it under the ice, just let me know in the comments because I'm not, right now, I'm thinking I don't really want to do a lot more underwater drone stuff. Number one, because they are pretty expensive. I mean, they're anywhere from 500 up to $1,500. And, and so if you're gonna invest that kind of money, you better have some space that you're gonna be able to use it and capture some, some cool footage. I think it would be really awesome to get some fish on camera. I did get one. I got, a, I got one quick and it wasn't even on the camera. I wasn't even recording. I was using my screen recorder and I caught it and uh, that was a nice bass. But, but I definitely would 
consider that if you have, make sure you have water that you can use it in. That's the biggest drawback of underwater drones. And so, you know, the expense of it, having the appropriate water to use it in, those two things are kind of making me think, maybe I don't want to do underwater drones anymore. So, but I will say this is a really good one. It is very high quality. You get extra props, you get all the connections, you get everything you need. Hopefully they'll fix this controller. Hopefully it'll get a better mounting system for that. And uh, it comes with a really nice case. You can also get a backpack if you do want to carry it, but I wouldn't, it's really heavy. Uh, I'm not sure what the total weight is, but it's pretty heavy. So anyway, let me know if you have any other questions down in the comments. Hit that like button if you did get anything of value out of this. This is one of the first videos. I've probably had five videos that I didn't script since I started this channel and this is one of them because I think because it was easy for me to talk about it because I used it so much and uh, hopefully I, got, I gave you some information that's gonna help you make a decision if you're looking at getting into underwater drones. So hit the thumbs up, be sure to subscribe if you're not. Also I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at 51drones, you can find me on there. Thanks for watching the entire video today. Have a great day and as always, dive safe and dive smart. Have a good one.